When the Sixers picked Tyrese Maxey 21st overall in the 2020 draft, I felt like they had made a potentially franchise-altering move. I was on the record saying that I thought Maxey was the most gifted scorer in that entire draft, and it seemed pretty clear that there was nothing Philly needed more than a great pick-and-roll initiator and true perimeter bucket getter who could close games for them. And I thought Maxey could be that for them someday. And sure, maybe that was a lot to put on a guy who was picked in the 20s, but guess what? Here we are early on in year two of Maxi's career, and the guy's putting up basically 18 and a half points and four and a half assists a night on 52, 42, 87 splits and 61% true shooting. That kind of scoring production and efficiency on a good team is not at all normal for a kid who turned 21 two weeks ago, especially given that he was a non-lottery guy. In fact, it's a hell of a lot more than just abnormal. It is flat out historic. No 21-year-old guard in the history of the NBA has ever scored as many points per game as Maxi is right now on this efficiency by true shooting percentage. I'll say that again. Nobody ever. To me, Maxi has pretty clearly shown this season that he can A, bring a high level of perimeter scoring that this team has desperately needed since Jimmy Butler left, and B, be a special, efficient, 25-point-per-game type of scorer down the line. I'd probably take that from the 21st pick. As of late, maxi has been on a particular tear, having averaged almost 26 points a game on 57, 48, 92 splits over his last six games, as Philly has desperately needed reliable offense with them beat out. Again, that is not normal. But okay, what makes Maxi so good? Well, as is the case for so many of today's great guards, it all starts with the pick and roll. Maxi is a pick and roll maestro, where he ranks in the 92nd percentile as a scorer in almost half of his offense comes. In fact, out of the 40 players who run the most pick and roll in the NBA, Maxi is the most efficient scorer. So, uh, that's insane. Maxi is just naturally dangerous working with a screener, largely because he plays with excellent pace out of the pick and roll. He slithers around screeners like a 10 year vet, never in any sort of hurry which is essential to his use of the most lethal weapon in his arsenal, a floater that is truly among the best in basketball. Maxi has been a completely ridiculous 27 of 44 on floaters this season. That's 61.3% shooting. Nobody in the league is doing that on this kind of volume, and these are not shots that look easy for most people. Maxi has unbelievably soft touch, but he also has sensational balance and the ability to knock down floaters through contact. Sometimes he'll go right into a guy, hang in the air, and seemingly just throw the ball up, but he somehow manages to get it to fall a whole lot. Of course, he's also excellent at getting that high arcing shot off quickly while driving right before a rim protector can affect it, and he loves to use the glass when he's coming at an angle as much as anybody in the league, which he does exceptionally well. Needless to say, that's a phenomenal weapon. If you can just take a screen, get within 15 feet of the bucket, and have a very good shot at scoring every time, that tends to be a good thing. But Maxi can get all the way downhill too, because boy is he quick. As much as he enjoys weaving out of the pick and roll, Maxi can change gears in an instant, turn on the jets, and blow by a whole lot of people. He also has a tight, controlled handle, and he can explode out of a hesitation, crossover, or in and out dribble. Then, once he gets to the rim, Maxi is sensational. This season, he's hit a phenomenal 75% of his shots inside of three feet, and he's an all-around master of tough finishes. He has exceptional control of the ball with one hand, and he excels at shielding it from rim protectors, extending with his 6 foot 8 wingspan, and using the glass skillfully on difficult layups. His overall finishing package is just nasty. He can hit scoop layups or get it done with his inside hand, and he has excellent body control in the air with the ability to navigate traffic and finish through contact. Plus, he's just persistent and fearless attacking the rack. His quickness and finishing also make him terrifying in the open court, where he attacks often and is among the league's best transition scores, as he ranks in the 80th percentile there. So yeah, in and around that painted area is where Maxi excels most, but he's a very legitimate jump shooter too. His percentages weren't always pretty at Kentucky or as a rookie, but I had faith that with Maxi's skill creating off the dribble and overall touch, that that shot would come along. And boy has it. 
Maxi has hit 46% of his pull-up threes and 41% of his catch-and-shoot threes this season, which is obviously outstanding. He's not a volume three-point shooter, as he only takes 3.4 a game, but he doesn't need to be. It's not the foundation of his game, but it does make him that much tougher to guard because you have to always be wary of him confidently and efficiently stepping into that shot. He's also demonstrated some pretty advanced creation for his jump shot and has hit five of nine step back threes this season. So personally, I'd expect to see more big time perimeter shooting nights for Maxi as his game continues to grow over the years. He also is not afraid to pull for mid-range if defenses give it to him, where he's hit an impressive 46% of his attempts and that gives him just another weapon in his arsenal, particularly out of the pick and roll. So if we're just running down the categories you look for in an elite scorer, what is Maxi missing? Advanced pace out of the pick and roll? Check. High end quickness and a great first step? Check. Strong handle? Check. Elite floater? Check. Impressive finishing around the rim? Check. Pull up jump shooting? Check. Transition scoring? Check. Confidence, aggression, good shot selection and efficiency? Check, 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 and check. So, I mean, unless you also wanted him to be 6'8", I'd say he's pretty much got everything you could look for in a scorer. And boy, oh boy, do the Sixers need that. Since Butler left, and outside of some exceptional Seth Curry moments, Philly has never had that high-end pick-and-roll ball handler and lead perimeter scorer that every true contender needs. And we've seen it hurt their ability to consistently manufacture great playoff offense. Two years ago, Philly ranked just 11th of 16 teams in playoff offensive rating, and in their Eastern Conference semis loss to Atlanta last year, they posted the equivalent of the number 11 playoff offense overall. That's just not good enough if you're trying to win a title. Now, they have a perimeter initiator who is at least a level up from anything they've had over the last couple seasons, and he's only going to get better and better. And yes, right now, that's a lot of responsibility to put on Maxi. But he's also a guy who you can just trust with the ball in his hands. He's going to be efficient as a scorer, and while he may not wow you with his playmaking, he's an unselfish guy and is perfectly adequate reading the floor. He also has an exceptional ability to limit turnovers, as he's averaged just 1.2 per game this season. You know how many other players in basketball scoring as much as Maxi have turned the ball over that infrequently? Zero. Another instance where he's in a club of his own. That is just so, so special. To have that blend of skill and efficiency and discipline at this age on a team with aspirations to contend is borderline unheard of. For what it's worth, Maxi still needs to improve on defense, but he plays with effort on that end too and has impressive length, athletic tools, and hands. And hey, if you haven't heard enough, Maxi's also already in a very exclusive club of eight players scoring 18 points per game on 61% true shooting that features pretty much just him, some of the most skilled scorers on the planet, and Harrison Barnes. Shout out to the Black Falcon there. At the end of the day, Maxi has very convincingly addressed what I felt was the biggest question mark about this Sixers team. And if he keeps this up and their defense plays closer to expectations as they get healthy, then they are real scary, man. Even without Embiid for much of the early season, they rank second in offensive rating right now. And Maxi has been a huge part of that. And again, He's just going to get a lot better from here because, you know, he's less than 20 games into his second season. Outside of LaMelo and Anthony Edwards, there is no player I would rather have from the 2020 draft. So buy up all your Tyrese Maxey stock now because this kid is going to be special. And frankly, he already is. To those of you who have made it this far, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, the good news is we have plenty more content like this. You can stick around here on our YouTube channel and see that we do video essays, video breakdowns like this often. I try to do one every week. We also do a couple of live shows Mondays and Wednesdays talking basketball on this channel. We're going to take this week off for Thanksgiving, but normally know that you can count on that. You can also listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your audio content. And on Fridays, we do an audio only NFL show as well. You can also find all of our content on our website, nerdsesh.com. We have written video and audio content there, and you can follow us on social media. Twitter is at nerd underscore sesh, and Instagram and TikTok are both at nerd sesh. With that, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed.